The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. The crowded cafe in the Gold Strike Hotel in Selkirk was a setting for a strange scene one November evening. Old Pat O'Hara was collecting for a mission. As the genial Irishman went from table to table, the hat he held before him got heavier and heavier as the men threw partially filled pokes of gold dust into it. <laughs> Come on now, Tim O'Malley. You'll never get into heaven if you don't do better than this. <laughs> well, I swear, Pat, I lost every other cent I had playing Pharaoh. I'll give you more when I get it, that I promise you. All right. And don't think I'd be forgetting. And you've been hanging you were a big winner at poker tonight. <laughs> That's right, Pat. There you are. Uh, thank you, Ben. This will make St. Peter smile, I'm telling you. <laughs> and you, Sandy. Surely you brought in lots of gold from that rich claim of yours? I guess maybe you ought to forget that I'm a good Presbyterian, Pat. Any country be done, I'll be done. We'll be going back to Scotland for missionary work in Africa. <laughs> sure, and don't you care what happens to people right here in the Yukon? <laughs> The Indians here are needing it much more than your Africans. That's again the principles to get another Kirk than me on. And what difference does it make which path to heaven you take? The good Lord will open the gate just as wide if he knows you were good enough to donate something to the Catholic mission and help Father McCarthy bring civilization to the poor Indians of the Yukon as he would if you helped your Presbyterians convert some cannibals someplace you never even heard about. <laughs> He's right, Sandy. Come on, Sandy. you got to be broad-minded. We all gave something. you got to do it. Uh, well, uh, I guess there's no way out, but it's again my principles. Here you are. <laughs> Thanks to you, Sandy. And if I get to the promised land first, I'll have a gold stool all dusted off for you next to me. Just in case the Presbyterians don't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> well, Doctor, how are you, Jay? Fine, Pat. How's the collection coming? Yeah, looks as if you're doing pretty well. Oh, everybody's been generous. When Father McCarthy gets here, he'll have more than $5,000 to add to what he's got. Uh, you mean he's got more than this to start his mission? The church in Ottawa has given him plenty. And every town of the Yukon has given something. It's one of the first missions to be started since the gold rush began. Is it going to be built around here somewhere? No, it's up near the Indian village, just this side of Dawson. Are you boys contributing? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll have to give you some tomorrow. I'm broke. Uh, um, me too. Well, Father McCarthy won't be here till next week. <laughs> there's plenty of time. <laughs> hey, there's Bill Crane. I've been wanting to see him. Bill, look, hello, Bill. Hello. Hey, you won't catch me giving anything to the mission. Me neither. If I had to get my hands in that hat full of gold he's carrying. Look, Bill Crane is putting a big poke of dust in it. Yeah, I'd like to shove it down his throat. You and Bill had quite a fight the other night, didn't you, there? Yeah. I made a nasty remark about that mangy dog of his, and he didn't like it. Bill's crazy about that dog. It's a vicious cur. It almost took my hand off the other day when I went too close to it. It's half wolf, I guess. That's why he calls it Lobo. It'll do anything he wants it to, though. Yeah. Someday I'm going to put a bullet through it. You better not let Bill hear you say that. I'm not through with him, either. You better watch that temper of yours, Dirk. Let's get out of here before you and Bill tangle again. You think I'm afraid of him? Ah, no, he won't. He hasn't even seen you. Anyway, I got an idea I want to talk over with you. Can't you talk here? No, it's about Father McCarthy and the collection. Come on. I uh, think you'll be in. It was a few days later that Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police stopped his dog team in front of Pat O'Hara's cabin. As he walked toward the door, his big lead dog, King, followed close at his side. Well, King, I'm afraid you're going to miss that when we leave this territory, aren't you? Sergeant Preston, come in. And King is glad I am to see you. How are you, Pat? Oh, I'm fat and lazy as ever. 
Sit down and make yourself comfortable. Oh, thanks. And make you some tea and give King a bone. I've been saving for him just in case he thought of <laughs> I'm afraid you spoil this dog of mine, uh, Bob. Not him. It's myself I'm thinking of. If ever anything happens, I want that dog to be on my side. You won't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, I can't wait till Father McCarthy sees him. Father McCarthy? Oh, sure, and I forgot you've been away. He's the new priest that's coming up here to start the mission at Cree's Crossing. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. I knew Father McCarthy in Ottawa. He's one of the finest men I ever met. You and he will have a lot in common. He loves dogs and knows more about them than anyone I ever met, outside of yourself. That's rather unusual for a priest, isn't it, Pat? Well, Father McCarthy is an unusual man. He'll be liking each other on sight. When does he get here? He'll be here in about uh, three or four days, I think. Oh, that's too bad. I'll miss seeing him. You mean you won't be here? I dropped in to tell you I've been transferred to Dawson, Pat. King and I came to say goodbye. Ah, oh, don't tell me. That's the worst news I've had since I came up to the Yukon. You and King going away. Well, it doesn't mean you'll never see us, Pat. We'll come back quite often. But you'll be able to see Father McCarthy. He'll be right near you when they build the mission. That's right, he will. I'll look him up. Yeah. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Sergeant, would you do me a favor? Of course, Pat. I've collected over $5,000 for the mission. I was going to let Father McCarthy take it up with him. But maybe it'd be safer with you. I'll be glad to take it up with me, Pat. The rest of the money is up there waiting for him. The money given by the church, I mean. Would you take this to Cree's Crossing and leave it there? All right. Pierre Dormay will keep it for him in the safe at his trading post. Oh, I know, Pierre. Yes, I'll take it for you, Pat. I'll uh, feel better about Father McCarthy if he isn't carrying a lot of money on the trade. Everyone around here knows we took up a big collection. <laughs> Never mind, King. <laughs> I haven't forgotten you. I'll get that bone, I promise, right away. <laughs> it was four days later, and Father McCarthy had arrived in Selkirk. He was tall, had a huge frame and unruly gray hair, and might well have been taken for a man who worked with his hands rather than a representative of the church. His eyes, however, were soft and understanding. They twinkled a little as he talked to Pat O'Hara in the lobby of the Gold Strike Hotel that evening. The lobby was empty, and they sat in a corner talking quietly. Yes, you're right, Pat. From the little I've seen of it, this is a rough country. But you know, we men of the church aren't made of glass. We can take rough living as well as the next man. Well, I didn't mean you wouldn't be able to take it, Father. But I thought a bit of warning to you wouldn't come amiss. And I appreciate it, you may be sure. And then there's another thing I meant to warn you about. I know how much you love dogs. <laughs> you still fool around with them as much as you used to. <laughs> yes. In my last parish, I was almost as much of a veterinarian as I was a priest. All the children used to bring their dogs to me for repairs. <laughs> I believe I mended as many animals as I did souls. Well, the dogs up here are different. Lots of them are part wolf. And if you go near them or try to pat them... You're liable to end up with a hand missing. There's a secret to handling dogs, Pat, that many people don't know. Yeah? A dog can sense fear in a man. If a man is afraid, he seems to give off a certain scent that a dog recognizes. Dogs hate it. Because they know that where there's fear, there may be danger. They'll uh, usually jump a man if they know he's afraid of them. Well, no, I never heard of that before. Oh, sure, don't worry, Pat. I'm sure I'll get along with your vicious huskies as well as I will with the people in this territory. There's a lot of drinking and gambling. The average prospector ain't the kind of man you'll meet in church. <laughs> well, even though a man may forget the church for a while, he, he often feels the need of God. Take John O'Rourke in Ottawa. He's the one who left $10,000 to start this mission near Dawson. So that's where he got the money to start it. John made a fortune up there. <laughs> Mercy on us, what's that? Oh, probably just a fight. <laughs> There's a bar just two doors down. It ain't unusual. Come on, let's see what happens. Yes. He's shot Bill Crane. Where did Bill go? I don't know. What happened, boys? Bill Crane's been shot. Hey, look out, everybody. That's Crane's lead dog. Be careful of that, Husky. He's vicious. Look, Father McCarthy. He's standing over Bill's body. Yes, I see. He won't let any of us go near Bill. Bill's unconscious. We're going to have to shoot that dog if we want to help Bill. Bill thinks as much of that dog as he does himself. Get away, Lobo! Oh, you'll never drive him off, Pat. We'd better shoot Lobo before Bill bleeds to death. I'm going to plug hey, him. Wait a moment. Maybe I can help. 
Who are you? This is Father McCarthy, boys. He just came to Selkirk. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Father. I know how to handle dogs. Perhaps I can get them away from his master. Uh, but Lobo's a vicious husky, Father. He'll tear you to pieces. Please, don't take a chance, Father. Let me shoot him. Let me try first. Father McCarthy, no. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Steady, Lobo. We can't let your master lie here in the snow. Come on now, boy. We're not going to hurt you. That dog will take his hand. He's got more nerve than I have. All right, Lugo. You see, here's my hand. Bite it if you will. We're going to help Bill. Now, you see, I won't hurt him, boy. Come on. Off him, fellow. Here, yeah, let me take hold of your collar. Now, now, fellow, steady. Come on, Lobo. Why, he's getting more. I've never seen anything like that. Sergeant Preston is the only other man who could ever do that. Come on, Lobo, come along. We'll let you go back to him when it's time. All right, boys. Carry the man into the hotel. I'll hold this door. Bill's hurt bad, ain't he? Yeah, it looks like it. Dirk Mason better not show his face around this part of the country after doing this. Now, come on, boys. Let's get him into the hotel. Yeah, yeah right, give me a hand. Right, right, come on. All right, come on. All right, come on. Dirk Mason left town the night of the shooting. He headed north, his goal a small cabin isolated well off the Dawson Trail. It was the second night of his hiding out, and his provisions were running low. He paced the floor nervously. What the? Let me in. Dirk. Jake, how did you know I was here? Where else could you be? Boys, where you head after any trouble? I brought some grub for you. How's uh, Bill Crane? Is he dead? He hasn't died yet, but he's hurt bad. Yeah, too bad I didn't finish. You crazy hothead. I don't know why you had to pull a gun on him. All because of a silly argument. I suppose he talked. You fool, he didn't have to. But five people saw the fight. If he dies, you're in bad trouble. You've got to get out of the country. Once the Mounties get on your trail, you're through. And how do you think I can get out of the country? I haven't got a nickel, and I know you haven't either. That's why I came here tonight. I figure we can both get plenty. How? Remember the collection they were taking up for Father McCarthy? Yeah. You thought maybe we could get it some way. We can. Father McCarthy is in Selkirk. He's leaving tomorrow for Dawson. You mean he's coming up this way on the Dawson Trail? Yeah. And he'll be carrying plenty of gold with him. All that he collected, plus the money he brought from Ottawa. It'll be a fortune. And if we can get it, we'll head for the border and get back to the States. After all, he, he is a priest. What's the difference? We're watching that trail starting tomorrow. It was late the following day that Jake and Dirk heard a dog team coming as they waited beside the trail leading to Dawson. The two men stood behind a thick clump of fir trees as the sled drew closer. Well, I'll bet that's Father McCarthy. I heard him say he was getting an Indian to bring him up here. What are we going to do about the Indian? One less here in the Yukon won't be noticed. Well, Jake, be careful if we murder what him. What are you yelling about? You may have a murder charge against you right now if Bill Crane dies. I'll keep still. Here they are. Come on, Dirk. I'll take care of the Indian. You watch Father McCarthy. Stick him up, you. And stop that team. Oh, 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 cool. oh, oh. What do you mean, what? Keep your hands up. I have no gun. Nogger's gun is on the slit. But you not hurt Father McCarthy. Him priest. We won't hurt him. We just want to lighten your load a little bit, Father. We want the money you're taking up to Dawson for the mission. I have no money with me. Hey, what's this? A priest not telling the truth? It is the truth. We'll have to search him, Dirk. We better take him back to the cab, and it's dangerous here on the trail. Someone might come. You, Indian, drive that team ahead and turn off the trail between those trees. And Jake, you lead the way. All right. Now keep him covered with his gun. All right, Indian, get that team going. Rush! Nanga sat in a corner of the cabin, securely tied. 
Father McCarthy faced Dirk and Jake quietly. I've told you I have no money on me outside of what's in this purse. You're sure he's not wearing a money belt, Dirk? I searched him. There's nothing on the sled but supplies. All right, Padre. You better tell us where it is. Where's the money to start the mission in Dawson? Well, boys, I have lots of faith in human nature. And I'm not a timid man. But I know better than go around this country carrying that much money. It's waiting for me up there. What do you mean? In Dawson? Besides, much of this so-called money you speak of is in the form of supplies and things that can be traded to the Indians in return for their labor. You'll have to trade it for gold first before you could steal it. We should have known that's what they do. So now, if you let us be in our way... No, you don't. Sit down. We're not through with you. What'll we do? Ah, we better let him go. I think that would be very wise. I'm not letting him go and have him squeal to the mounted police the minute he gets to Dawson. But I don't know who you are. There are many men with black beards and blue eyes like yours. Hey, my beard... Nobody'd guess if I shaved it off. Well, what are you talking about? Nobody in Dawson knows a padre here. And nobody in Dawson knows me. I'm changing clothes with him, Jake, and shaving off my beard. With the papers he's carrying, I can get my hands on the money and trade some of the supplies for gold. We can still do it. Dirk, you're out of your mind. We're the same size. His clothes will fit me. And I'm sure we can persuade Father McCarthy to tell us who is keeping the money and the supplies for us. I'm afraid you're wrong, ma'am. That money belongs to the church. It is my duty to protect it. I'll tell you nothing. And torturing me wouldn't help. Uh, He's just the kind they wouldn't tell, Dirk. No matter what you did to him. But uh, he might be willing to tell to save Nanga. What? You give us the right information, or you're going to see Nanga shot right here in front of you. You don't know what you're saying. You wouldn't murder an innocent man. He knows nothing about all this. (laughs) You wouldn't want an innocent man to lose his life for a few dollars, would you, Father? Do not tell them, Father. It's going to be too bad for you if he does. Please, leave him out of this. I'll ask you just once. Who is keeping the money and supplies, and where is he? Will you promise not to hurt Nanga if I tell you? <laughs> sure. I'll promise. The money is in Cree's crossing. Pierre Dorme is keeping everything for me until I get there. Cree's crossing? Why, oh, that's better than having it in Dawson. Maybe you could get away with it, Dirk. I'll get away with it, all right. And, uh, what'll I do about these two? I think you'd better stay here and guard them. Hmm. Father McCarthy may have given me the wrong information. I didn't lie to you. Sergeant Preston took the money they collected for me to Pierre just a few days ago. Um, have you ever met Sergeant Preston, Father? No. He left before I got there. So, that money's up around Dawson. Dirk, do you know him? No, I've always kept out of his way. He's never seen me. Now, we're safe there. We're safe, all right. I tell you, they never suspect me. But you'd better hold those two here until I get back. We may need more information from Father McCarthy. I'll hold him here, don't worry. And when you get your hands on that money and trade those supplies for gold, come back here as soon as you can. It was a few days later that Sergeant Preston drove his dog team to Cree's Crossing and stopped at the trading post of Pierre Dome. Look here. Oh, you husky. Come along, King. Hello, Pierre. Sergeant Preston. Bonjour. How are you, Pierre? <laughs> and there is that fine dog, King. How are you, boy? Well, he remembers you, Pierre. Oh, uh, did Father McCarthy get here all right? We. Oui. He is here. You know him? No, but I'm very anxious to. I hear he's a fine man. Oh? You don't sound very enthusiastic. Don't you like him? Well, (laughs) me, uh, I don't like say anything bad about man of God. But, uh, uh, well, (laughs) everybody is, uh, uh, how you say, uh, uh, disappoint. Disappointed? We. The bishop, he write us what fine man is Father McCarthy. Yes. Best man for North Country, he say. 
We expect maybe he understand all men are not plaster saints. You mean he isn't like that? No. He's silent man. Does not make fun. And another thing. Never has he said mass. Well, that's odd. I was prepared for someone altogether different. Where's he living? We have cabin ready for him at edge of town when he comes. That's fine. I guess I'll run out and see him. It is last one on trail south of town. Uh, maybe you could tell him, Sergeant, that it is not good for him to keep money in cabin. Better he should leave it here in my safe. You mean he took it away from here? We. Oui. This morning I give it to him. He say, must have charge of money. Eh, it's not for me to say. I'll advise him to bring it back to you for safekeeping, Pierre. Oh, uh, by the way, is White Eagle in the village? We. Oui. Why did he come in store this morning? Good. I'm going on a patrol north, and I need a guide. I'll find him after I call on Father McCarthy. Quiet, King. Quiet, boy. Yes? Father McCarthy, I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. What, uh, what do you want? Why, uh, Pat O'Hara and Selkirk told me to look you up. Oh, Oh, yes, sir. Uh, come in. Thanks. One king. As the big dog walked into the cabin beside his master, he caught the scent of the man before him. This man was tense and afraid. The scent of fear that King hated was in the air. When people were frightened and tense, it always meant danger for his master. The hair bristled on King's back and he bared his teeth and snarled at the man in the black robe of a priest. King, what's wrong with you? Stop it. Quiet, King. I I hope you'll excuse him, Father McCarthy. I can't imagine what ails him. Would, uh, would you mind putting him outside, Sergeant? I, I'm not used to dogs and these huskies up here in the Yukon. They make me very nervous. You will have a lot in common with Father McCarthy. He loves dogs and knows more about them than anyone I ever met. Outside of yourself. I'm uh, sorry, Father. I'll put him outside at once. Come on, King. Outside, boy. You wait out there. I uh, hope you don't mind. Why, no, not at all. I suppose being a priest, you're not used to dogs. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we're uh, we're too busy with our church duties to have uh, time for pets. I see. Uh, sit down, Sergeant. Why, I really can't stay. I just dropped in to say hello. Are you, uh, going to be in town long? No, I'm just passing through. Oh, I see. You're going to have quite a job here in Crease Crossing, getting the mission started. It's quite a responsibility. Uh, how often do you get over here, Sergeant? Oh, I'll probably be back in about a month. That's when I make my next patrol. And you're leaving this afternoon, you say? I'm getting an Indian guide to take north with me. Well, now I guess I'd better leave, Father. I have to take advantage of what little daylight there is. It was nice meeting you, Sergeant. Stop and see me again the next time you come to Crease Crossing. I'm sure we'll meet again, Father McCarthy. All right, King. Let's go, boy. It was evening, two days later. Father McCarthy sat near the big stove in the cabin with Jake watching him, a gun on the table before him. Nanga, the Indian guide, lay on a cot, his hands and feet tied. I just want to ask something. Not for myself. It's for Nanga. We're not taking any chances. Dirk and I have to make the border before anyone knows what happened. But if he does return with the church money, perhaps you could take Nanga with you to the border and free him there. Listen, Father... We're not bothering with a prisoner when we'll be trying to get to the border. Then you do intend to kill us. I didn't say that. Come on, get over there now. Stop talking. Murder is a serious thing, Jake. Who said anything about murder? Maybe we'll just tie you up and leave you. Of course, if nobody finds you before you freeze to death, that'll be your hard luck. It's a gamble you'll have to take. Of course, Dirk may have other ideas. Now, come on, get over there on that bed. I want to put that rope here. Dirk! Didn't hear you coming. Did you get the money? Sure, I didn't have any trouble. Nobody suspected me at all. And I don't need any more help from the padre here. Good. What do we do now? We start packing right away. They may be looking for me now. Oh, let me 
thought you said they didn't. And if I've yeah. left my cabin, they'll start looking for me. They'll be worried. They won't find I've gone for a day or two. I uh, sent word to Pierre that I didn't want to be disturbed for a few days while I made plans for the mission. <laughs> I don't see how they could have believed you. <laughs> You'd be surprised how pious I can look, Father. I'm sure I look more like a priest than you do. There's evil written all over your face. Oh, there is, huh? Well, it's going to be the handwriting on the wall for you. We can't take any chances. Maybe we could just leave him tied up here, Dirk. Him and the Indian. He's not going to be able to talk. The Mounties found out who did this. They chase us to China if necessary. I'm not asking anything for myself. But let Nonga go. He doesn't know who you are. Sorry, Father. I'd like to accommodate you, but we can't take any chances. I'll tie him up until we get packed. Don't bother. We can't spare the time. Well, Father McCarthy, I guess this is the end. Yeah. Want to use my gun? I got a gun right here. Stop that gun! Get him, Kate! Oh, I'll get that door! No, you don't! Stop him! No, get him away from me! Get him away, you cut! Uh, come back, fella. I've got his gun. Get up, you. Watch him, King. I've got this one's gun. Good work. Craig, you and Marty. Yes. And you must be Father McCarthy. I am. I wasn't sure that wallop you just gave this man. I... Wasn't sure a priest could he hit like that. He was about to shoot your dog. Sometimes even the church finds force necessary. That was a beautiful punch. He won't come to for quite a while. Your dog saved my life. I've never seen anything quite so fast. Get this dog away! You don't like dogs, do you? But that one is going to watch you, and if you're smart, you won't try to get away. How did you find me? It was because of King Father McCarthy that I knew this man was a fraud. Pat O'Hara had told me how you loved dogs. And when I called on our prisoner here, King sensed something wrong. He growled at him. He knew Dirk was afraid of him. And then Dirk made the bad mistake of saying he didn't like dogs and was afraid of them. But you didn't arrest him? Well, I had no definite proof, Father. Instead of going north as I'd planned, King and I camped near his cabin and kept watch. He left the cabin that night, and King had no trouble trailing him. He led us directly to you. Jake seems to be coming, too. I'll handcuff him now before he wakes up. They'll take those ropes off poop. All right, Jake. Wake up. You're under arrest. What happened? Oh, you just got a little taste of the strong arm of the church. Get up. I'm arresting you and your partner for robbery and attempted murder. Is Nongo all right, Father? Me all right. Good. You and Father McCarthy can help me get these prisoners back to Dawson. We'll be glad to, Sergeant. By the looks of that dog of yours, you won't need much help. He's a wonderful animal. I have a feeling you and he are going to be very good friends, Father. All right, King, old boy. I'll take charge of the prisoners. Now, you go on over and get acquainted with Father McCarthy. This case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all characters, names, and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. L. Prowl speaking, this program came to you from Detroit. One radio actor who puts his all into his role is Billy Redfield, star of the Willie Piper Show, which is heard over most of these ABC stations every Thursday night. Although he's well aware that the listening audience can't see him, Billy lavishes upon each line all the facial expressions and gestures that would be called for in voicing it before a live audience. While you chuckle through the humorous situations that arise in the Piper's New England household, you're never aware that someone is acting the Willie Piper role. Billy Redfield is Willie Piper. Only 20 years old, young Redfield is a veteran of 11 years' experience on Broadway and in radio. As a matter of fact, all the characters of the Willie Piper show are exceptionally well cast. So when you're tuned in to Thursday night's Tales of Willie Piper, you're sure of enjoying a delightful, well-acted comedy.